So we need to be more authentic with each other. Whole life, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Christ, Jesus, the great physician. And he was healed. And it's, now it's really time to reconnect with your family. All about life, health, and healing hope. Welcome to this edition of Healing Hope. On today's show, filmmaker Martin Doblemeyer sits down with Lonnie to discuss his documentary, The Adventists, which explores Adventist healthcare in America and the overall impact of the Adventist health mission. And later on, we'll learn about the warning signs of cancer. But first, here's Lonnie Meloshenko and Dr. Becky Wong. Welcome to Healing Hope, talking about life, talking about health, together with my co-host, Dr. Rebecca Wong. Thanks for joining me again today. We have a very special guest on our broadcast today. Yes, we do, Lonnie. Martin Doblemeyer is an award-winning documentary filmmaker, and we were privileged for him to come to Kettering Medical Center a year ago, and I was able to go around and help him get into the operating room and different hospital units to film what we do at Kettering every day at the intersection of faith and healing in the hospital setting. That's right, and he's an incredible personality himself. Very, very gifted, not only behind the camera, producing, and actually his voice is on that film as well. He did his homework. He went all the way back to the beginnings of, uh, well, health in America when we were kind of down in the pits in terms of how we took care of patients. And the difference that Adventists made and contributed to the whole health of America back in the uh, mid-1800s. That's right. So Lonnie, I can't wait to hear your interview with Martin. Thank you so much in your busy schedule for joining us here on Healing Hope. I know you're about to fly out of town and uh, head to some other appointments, but you've been making documentaries for years, starting 15, 20 years ago with 25. The Heart Has Its Reasons, and then one on uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and another one on Forgiveness, which is still a popular one on the Internet. Why would you choose at this stage in your career to do one on Adventist health care? Well, for me, all the films are on topics of religion, faith, spirituality, so I would have hoped I would have gotten around to it somewhere along the line. I have Adventist friends, but um, it was because I was invited to go to Loma Linda um, several years ago and show one of the earlier films on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, and I was at the Loma Linda University Church, and while I was out there, my wife and I had the opportunity to see uh, the medical facilities, the proton accelerator, mm -hmm. meet Dr. Len Bailey. And I began to formulate an idea. We could make an act a documentary film about the intersection between faith and health care with Adventists and to talk about the Adventist story, which I thought was untold. Well, as you began filming, did anything surprise you? Well, it was a constant surprise. Uh, I think one of the things that I came away with a, with a new appreciation for is how Adventists honor the Sabbath. Hmm. I think um, the truth is that for most Christians today, Sunday has become another work day. It's become a day when you go to church, if you go to church on Sunday morning, and then the rest of the day is devoted to taking care of the house or running all the errands. And, and by Monday morning, you're, you're t exhausted mm -hmm. going back to work. Uh, Adventists take it differently. Saturday is the day of worship and gathering, but it's also a true day of rest. And I think from a health message, that's an important thing. But I think also from a, from a spiritual rest point of view, that's a really valuable message. So I think the gift that the film brings is to show most people in this country who may not be aware of the value that Adventists give to Sabbath, I think that's a really special moment. Now, you uh, focused on several Adventist health care facilities. Mm -hmm. Was there any kind of a common thread that you found, uh, whether it was in Florida or Loma Linda or here at Kettering? Well, well, I think commitment to mission. I think I saw again and again that there was a genuine focus on what the purpose of the health care effort was, mm -hmm. and that it was centered around the appreciation that hospital work, health care work, is sacred work. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that caring for the body is, you're, when you're caring for the body, you're caring for the temple of God. You follow some very personal stories with patients mm -hmm. and their families. Uh, the family with a son who desperately needs a heart transplant, for example. That was very, very touching. Mm -hmm. Was that hard to do? Certainly it's hard to do. And um, with these kind of films, you, you're constantly engaging people in their personal lives uh, at, at really most, the most vulnerable moments, I think. And I think from a filmmaking point of view, you have to be really sensitive to the moment in which you've encountered these, these families and these people. And uh, you come in as a stranger. 
Uh, you hope that there's been some trust that's begun to develop between you and the times that you've met in advance, but really, um, they take an enormous risk to give us the opportunity to tell their story. And uh, this particular story was quite remarkable. We had decided we would film that particular week at Loma Linda and really weren't sure exactly what was going to happen that week. And uh, the remarkable thing that happened, and I think in some ways the hand of Providence gets involved in this, but a, a young boy was on the list to get a trans heart transplant, but there was no heart available. Mm -hmm. So all they could do was an operation to see if they could keep him alive for several more months in the faint hope that he might be able to find a heart, they might mm -hmm. be able to find a heart for him. And the curious thing was that uh, his older brother, seven years older than him, had gone through the exact same experience with Dr. Leonard Bailey seven years before that. Two people in the same family needed a heart transplant. That, you know, that, that mother and father, I just have so much respect for the mother and father. They're people of faith, but and sometimes, you know, you have to look at the world that's unfolding in front of us, and you wonder how much can people take, and having these, these kind of situations confronted. But they're people of deep faith, and they would stay upstairs while the operations were going on and read the Bible, the sacred text, yes. and, and hope to God that things were going to work out okay. And in both cases, uh, the prognosis looks terrific. Mm. Let's take just a moment and look at a clip from the film. Mm. Today, Adventists operate some of the nation's leading hospitals. One of the key ways that we thought we would make history is to create the community hospital of the future. Explore the latest medical technology. To the trained eye, he has an aneurysm right here. Expand on the pioneering work of infant heart transplants. Like we can take his heart out, put a new heart in. There's something miraculous about all that. Practice a body, mind, and spirit approach to health and healing. Even the curriculum in medical school is changing to incorporate a more holistic view. And the irony is that Adventists who believe in the near end of the world are now among the healthiest and longest living people on the planet. Well, I'm 98 years young. They live anywhere from five to up to 10 years longer. It's pretty exciting. Four. Longevity is one focus of the film. As researchers study Adventists, uh, what are they finding about that? Well, they're saying time and time again that if you want to live a longer and seemingly healthier life, you live like an Adventist. Mm -hmm. The language is pretty clear. The British Journal of Medicine, one of the, one of the ten criteria for a longer life says live like an Adventist. Now, Newsweek. What, Newsweek. And what does that mean? It simply, it, it means really, I'm not sure necessarily whether there's that many different components that, w that we don't already know. A vegetarian, ve vegetarian lifestyle for Adventists and they don't smoke, they don't drink. They take that day of Sabbath, the day of rest, very seriously. Uh, these are things that uh, we commonly know we should be knowing in our health and our health reasoning. Uh, but the truth of the matter is it's part of the faith tradition of Adventist, of Seventh-day Adventist. And that's where for us, um, as a company that's interested in telling stories on the intersection between faith and our daily lives, that to me made a perfect intersection between those two. Because you do it not simply to live longer. Mm -hmm. You do it in the most fundamental reason because you believe that the body is the temple of God and that it needs to be honored and respected. And that's a very different reason, I think, than simply wanting to live longer. We'll have more with Lonnie Melashenko and Martin Doblemeyer after this brief break. Over a century ago, a brilliant young Dayton inventor had a vision for the future. I'm by himself. You know, this Kettering guy just might change the world. Today, that same spirit lives on at the Kettering Medical Center Network, bringing the best in medical technology from around the world home to Dayton. With that kind of vision for the future, what might tomorrow bring? Those guys just might change the world. You can only imagine. The Kettering Network for life. If I'm going to be a healthcare provider and if people are going to come to me and trust me, then I want to give them the best care that I possibly can. I love it. It's great. The classroom sizes are awesome. You get that personal one-on-one -on -one time, even in class. They taught well and I learned well, and they really, truly cared. The philosophy of Kettering College of Medical Arts is such that our view of who we are as people means that when we care for others, we are doing the work of God. We are God's hands. It was just so surreal to me because I didn't ever think I had a heart problem. You know, here I was 47, and they said that, you know, I probably had about a 1% chance of making it. And I did. 
Kettering is known as the Heart Hospital, and when I see Kettering, I think that's where I got my second chance, and it feels like home. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. I knew it was serious the whole time, but it was still just unreal, and you never really soaked it in. So I was hearing all this stuff, and it sounded really bad. You can't even tell that she went through such a crisis because she's back to normal. They said she'll eventually feel better than she did before. So I don't think they realize that they not only saved my mom, but it helped save my family. For more of this story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. For physicians, the technology and the rate of information is just so fast that it's almost impossible to keep up. And so if people ask me, do you want to choose someone who's very technically competent and very up to date or someone who's compassionate, I say, I want both. Because if you're committed to the patient, you're going to read up on the latest technology and how you can provide that in a skilled way to the patient who needs it. You know, when you're a doctor, you touch people when they're hurting, and you have an audience that really needs hope and healing and good news, someone to care, someone to help them feel better. Anytime you touch a patient's life, it's sacred. Life is sacred. Well, that's our own Dr. Becky Wong, and she's raising a very interesting point, the need for high-tech care and compassion. Do you see a special emphasis uh, and a balance in this regard in Adventist healthcare? I do, and I have a personal story about that because uh, over the last couple of years, I've had my own health issues, and um, I, I want to say that when you're a patient lying in that bed and you're looking up into the eyes of the physician, you want to believe that uh, that person is up to date, totally up to date on the latest technology and can bring that benefit of that latest technology to you, but that they also see you as a human being and not just as a number, and they don't That's just right. see you as a chart, some, you know, on the chart. And so that was really important. And, and the second thing is, too, that in the last uh, couple of years of her life, my mom was very ill. Uh, my mom and dad were living in Orlando, Florida, and many times, most of the times that she w went into for care, uh, she would go into Florida Hospital, the Adventist right. Hospital in Orlando. And uh, she told me many times that she was cared for and felt comforted by the care that she was getting, both, I think, from the, the best technology available, uh, but also by the genuine care, everyone from the nurses to the technicians to the physicians that were there for her. And uh, she said that to me many times. And, and I want to say that when it came time for me, her son, to go off and make a film about Seventh-day Adventists, I brought a lot of that appreciation that I had into the making of the film. Were there any people in particular that really stood out to you? Well, lots, uh, that's easy to say, but uh, I, I love the character of Ellsworth Wareham. And I had met him at a gathering, a social gathering in, at Loma Linda a number of years ago. And frankly, I didn't know who he was, mm -hmm. other than the fact that I thought he was charming. And someone said to me, do you know how old he is? And I said, really, I don't. I thought maybe early 80s. And they said, no, he's about 95. He's in his mid-90s, and he still gets up every day and goes off and, and, and is involved in the operating room as a, as a participating surgeon. He's assisting in the surgery. Heart surgery, no less. It's, it's phenomenal when you think about it. And every time now we've shown the, the film in public, and people hear that, that at 95 he's still in the operating room, they just all gasp. And it's a wonderful testimony to uh, not only Adventist lifestyle, but the idea that your longer life needs to be not only longer for you to enjoy, but the opportunity to be productive and to give quality. back to the world, to, be a, to live a quality life, mm -hmm. that says so much, not only about his ability to live longer, but what he does with those extra years. Well, are, are there any stories you wish you could have included, but oh. you just didn't have time, they couldn't fit into the documentary? Well, there are a lot, and in particular, we had looked at uh, footage of some of the people that we had focused on, and particularly at Kettering, had gone off to Africa to do mission work. The, the mission component to the Adventist story w is not in the film. And it's simply a matter of the amount of time that I was allocated in the, in the making of the film. You know, public television is a one-hour format, and that was it. And I, I regret that. I, re I wish I could have had a chapter in the film, and maybe there's a whole other film to do about that very thing, mm -hmm. which is how the church now is actually a larger church outside the U.S. It's an American-born religion, but it's larger outside the U.S. than it is here. That's true. It's about 15 million people outside the U.S. and a million people here in the U.S. Uh, and the work, the, the hospital work, the health care work that's being done outside the United States is really remarkable. And Maybe there's a second film here. 
Now, historical reenactments are very prominent in your production of The Adventists. The 1860s and the Civil War was raging. And it was a time when medicine was still in the Dark Ages. There was no concept of a germ theory yet. A hospital is a place you went to die. A young woman, Lord. Ellen White, had a vision, she claimed from God, for a new understanding of health and healing. It became one of the cornerstones for a new American-born religion, the Seventh-day Adventists. What was it about the historical roots of the Adventist church way back in the 1840s uh, that caught your attention? Uh, I wanted the film to have a connection, uh, to show the connection w between what's happening on a contemporary level for the church today in its health care ministry, that it's not disassociated with its own history, mm -hmm. and that from the middle of the 1800s, uh, the Adventist church was clear that it wanted to go down this route the, the way the church evolved out of that moment called the Great Disappointment, mm -hmm. characters like John Harvey Kellogg, all of this, I think, and Ellen White, of course, is the center of all of this. And I, I wanted an opportunity to tell that story in such a way that it would give um, the viewer the imagination, uh, you could give them something to feed the imagination that would say, um, I understand where these people are coming from and why they have the commitment to do what they do. But to tell that story, you have to be careful. I mean, El Ellen White's story raises controversy. It does for a lot of people. It seems to others that it's a little strange that she would be a woman of visions. How do you, how do you visually depict that? I mean, yeah. you have to find the line in how to really uh, depict that because people who will be watching this will be people who believe that absolutely those visions came from God. Others will be highly skeptical of it. So you want to do it with enough latitude so that people on both sides can feel as though you've treated it with integrity. She would often faint on the floor. They'd put a pillow under her head and she would be seemingly out of it. They would test and the, they couldn't see that she was breathing. And then she would come out of these and start saying what she had seen. In 1863, she had what is known in, in my circles as the comprehensive health vision that outlined a deeper commitment and uh, to bodily health and an understanding of the close relationship between bodily health and spiritual wholeness. Now, what do you see as the connection between community and health? Well, I think the fundamental message that uh, the Adventists want to get out there, and I think in some ways the, the film talks about that, is that health care is not simply about the critical moment when you come into a hospital and you're already beyond where you need to be. You're already sick and vulnerable and weak by whatever health condition you have. But how, do, if you really do see the body as the temple of God, mm -hmm. um, that aspect of prevention, care of the body, is at the heart of the Adventist message. And I think it's a fundamental message for all of us. And what do you see as your hopes for this documentary going forward in the future? Well, I, I hope people enjoy watching the film as much as I enjoyed making the film. I, I enjoyed learning um, more about Seventh-day Adventism, its role in American history, and what it actually has to contribute now to this ongoing debate about health care. I, I, I've changed my own life. I was I'm just going to ask you, have you changed no, any no, of your I, habits? You, well, you know, with each one of these films, Lonnie, you have, to, you have to believe, as I do, that you're sort of sent in that direction at this particular time. You're led here uh, to maybe begin to think differently about certain topics. And in this particular case, I'm 58 and I'm taking my health really seriously. No, not that I didn't before. I mean, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and, but I'm really more focused on the idea of the body as the temple of God. I really have bought into that whole idea. Thinking like that is not just self-preservation, but it's honoring the gift that's been given to me. And that really does shape uh, this line in the film from Chuck Scriven, Charles Scriven, who says it really does have a revolutionary effect on the way that you treat yourself when you get up in the morning. And I'm starting to let some of that rub off on me. I think that's a really important thing to do. Now, how can our viewers see this film? It'll be airing nationally on public television. Um, it begins in April of 2010, and it'll air on public television for the next two years. And we hope there'll be hundreds and hundreds of airings of the film so that maybe we hope that anywhere between 30 and 40 million people will have a chance over the next two years to see the film. And um, we have the film on DVD, and, uh, and both the information about the film, where it's airing on PBS stations, and the DVD's availability is all on our website. Oh, give is, us that website it's information. It's www.journeyfilms.com, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y-F-I-L-M-S.com. It's both about the fact that we do travel a lot mm -hmm. to make these films, but it's also really about the, the spiritual, the inner journey that happens for all of us. And someone could even order a copy of a DVD. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Martin Doblemeyer, thank, thank you so you. much in your busy schedule as a film producer for joining us today on Healing Hope. We'll have more Healing Hope after this brief break. They actually do care about your progress. I know, when I heard that I said, yeah, okay, you know, you hear that from a lot of schools. No, really, we do care about your success. When I go home, I talk about Kettering because I've had such a great experience here. If you have a commitment to going into healthcare, you're gonna get there in a setting where you know your fellow students and where you know your teachers, and it's gonna make you someone who I think is gonna be really highly valued in the workplace. Never again just take anything, the perfect pregnancy for granted because you just never know. We were four weeks to the day early. I immediately was just like, we can't do this. We're not ready, you know, he's not ready. The special attention there was from the get-go. And so I knew he was gonna be in good hands because it was their child in a sense that the comfort was just there. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. He smiles all the time. He's just, you know, thriving. Loves his mommy and daddy. It was just so surreal to me because I didn't ever think I had a heart problem. You know, here I was 47 and they said that, you know, I probably had about a 1% chance of making it. And I did. Kettering is known as the heart hospital and when I see Kettering, I think that's where I got my second chance. And it feels like home. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. I knew it was serious the whole time, but it was still just unreal and you never really soaked it in. So I was hearing all this stuff and it sounded really bad. You can't even tell that she went through such a crisis because she's back to normal. They said she'll eventually feel better than she did before. So I don't think they realized that they not only saved my mom, but it helped save my family. For more of the story, go to experiencekettering.com. Kettering for life. One of the most important parts of treating cancer is early detection. There are many routine tests that are highly recommended for certain populations, such as pap smears for women or prostate exams for men. But guess what? Tests are only one piece in the puzzle. You are the most important early warning system. By knowing the signs of possible cancer, you will know when you need to seek medical care in order to receive an accurate diagnosis and early treatment. Here are some of the most common warning signs of cancer. Lymph gland swelling in the neck, armpit, or groin can be a common sign of simple infection or inflammation, but it can also indicate early cancer like lymphoma. Blood in the urine can also be a simple sign of a urinary tract infection, but it also may indicate early bladder or kidney cancer, especially if you're a smoker. Any change in your bowel habits, such as hard stools or a change in size, may indicate colon cancer. This is really important to know because many colon cancers do not ever bleed. You need to watch any moles or growths that you have on your skin because changes in size, color, or texture may be a flag for skin cancer. Not only is it important to check your own skin, but look at your loved one's back because they don't often see their back in the mirror and have them check your back. Most people know that lung cancer is a number one cause of cancer death in this country, but did you know that it can occur in non-smokers too? If you are a non-smoker and you have a dry cough that persists for more than a few weeks that isn't caused by allergies or asthma, it's time to check this out with your physician. If you are a smoker and your own smoker's cough has become more intense or you have blood in your phlegm or a persistent hoarseness, see your physician right away. Most of us are tired at one time or another, but any unusual fatigue that isn't relieved by ordinary rest associated with a low-grade fever, night sweats, or easy bruisability may be a possible indication of lymphoma, leukemia, or Hodgkin's disease. Unexplained weight loss or a change in appetite should also be checked out by your doctor. While there are many possibilities for the cause of this weight loss, 
One of them is certainly cancer. I'd like to end with ovarian cancer because it's often undetected until very late stages because the symptoms are so nonspecific. Pap smears and pelvic exams don't detect it. Because of this, particular attention should be paid to any symptoms of abdominal bloating, pelvic pressure or fullness, increased frequency of urination, or a change in your bowel habits. This list that we've talked about today is not intended to make you worry, but listening to your body is really important to keep you and your loved ones healthy. For Healing Hope, I'm Dr. Becky Wong. Healing Hope is all about helping you grow to a better you. Healthcare provides the most dynamic, meaningful opportunities to not only grow personally, but to touch lives for Christ. You see, restoring the body prepares the way for restoration of the soul. By healing people physically, the great physician connected his patients in more meaningful ways to deliver treatment for their spiritual condition. Now, Martin Dobemeyer shared with us today an important truth that he discovered while preparing his documentary on Adventists and health. And it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and on. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Taking care of the temple of the Holy Spirit has been the focus for Seventh-day Adventists from the earliest days of our church, and it is a proud heritage. We are compelled to follow in the footsteps of the great physician himself and reach those whose needs are physical as well as spiritual because the need for medical care is common to everyone. So when we reach out and give people the keys to a better life through medical care, through compassion, or through sharing the keys to a healthier lifestyle, we aren't just helping people lengthen the number of days, we're also helping them enjoy a more abundant life. Life to the full, as Jesus said. Thanks for joining us. For Kettering Health Network, I'm Lonnie Melashenko.